All right, in today's episode, we're gonna install one of these. This is our custom made bracket to upgrade your AnyCubic Photon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and check out our last video. Uh, and if you've bought one of these, you're in the right place. We're gonna show you the easy way to disassemble this and install it. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we need to do is remove these four screws. Next up are these two screws that hold the motor on. All right, next up are these two screws here that hold the end stop switch on. All right, now we flip the whole machine around and pull off this access panel. All right, and now we put this on its side gives us access to these four bolts. All right, be a little careful on this last one as the uh, pillar is going to want to fall down at this point. All right, this whole thing should be ready just to come right out. Now you can go ahead and remove these two bolts. Also, if uh, yours doesn't have this nice groove cut out of it, that's because we added a bearing to this at one point. Not really necessary. And then your crappy linear slide can come right off. All right, now it's time to go ahead and open up our linear rails. These guys are linked below. They're 200 millimeter. Uh, the ones I actually used in the last video were like 400 millimeter. Uh, definitely longer than you need, so I had to cut them down, but this should make things a little easier. First thing you want to do is check and make sure they're moving nice and smooth. Usually they're kind of chunky and they've got some grit in there, so you want to go ahead and pull these off and clean them. So these actually have some ball bearing retaining springs in here that hold these in. If you pop them out, they're really not hard to put back in. All right, this is probably the most difficult part of this process. It's not hard, you just have to really take your time and be careful. Uh, for it, you're gonna need two clamps of some kind uh, that are wider than this. I'm just using these C-clamps. Uh, cordless drill or cord drill, doesn't matter. Uh, a, a drill bit that fits very snugly through here. Uh, I found a number 29 works really well. Uh, or if you got a transfer punch set, that would work too. Uh, and of course, your rail. So the reason I've got this on a piece of glass right now is this is designed for these to sit totally flush with the surface of that. So uh, you want something relatively flat. You could use your dining room countertop or whatever you have that's flat. This piece of glass is fairly flat. It'll do the job. So we've got our pillar set on the glass here and we're gonna take our linear rail and place it somewhere in the middle here. It's not super critical, just try and line it up about in the middle of these two. I've got it positioned where you can't see on the camera because we're gonna need our clamps to go this way so that they're not in the way. So I'm just putting a little bit of pressure down on the rail in the back to make sure it doesn't lift when I clamp it in place. You also wanna try and make sure that your clamp head is not in the way of any of the holes in the back because we're gonna need access to those. Again, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure down on this and the rail in the back. All right, then I'm just going to check it with a straight edge to make sure that it is totally flush, which it does seem to be. Now we're going to go ahead and mark the center of all these holes with this drill. It's important not to drill too far in. You're really just trying to leave a little divot to guide the correct size drill bit when we remove this. All right, you can see the little divots that I've made here. Once you've got those and all of the holes going along here, you can go ahead and remove your clamps. Of course, I've already got holes drilled in here from the last rail, so you can ignore those, but you see I've got the divots there all the way along. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and drill these through. Uh, these rails take three millimeter socket head screws. Um, well, I can include these in the kit if you want for an extra price. Let me know in the comments below, but otherwise I just order them on McMaster. I'll leave a link down in the description. 
So to drill these, uh, I would highly recommend using a drill press. If you don't have a drill press, you can use a hand drill. You just gotta really make sure that you're drilling in straight here. I'm not gonna re-drill these because I already have enough holes in this thing already. The critical part is just to make sure that you're drilling in perfectly straight and deep enough. Once your holes are drilled, go ahead and tap it with a three millimeter tap. All right, once all your holes are drilled and tapped, I would highly recommend you either deburr or chamfer the inside of these edges. If there's any raised burr on this level, it's gonna go ahead and throw off where this uh, rail sits. To do that, I love using these uh, Keo uh, Zero Flute chamfer bits. Uh, I can't recommend these enough. They are pretty expensive. I think the set I bought was like 70 or $80, but uh, they last a really long time and they leave a really nice finish. All right, the next step is to make sure your cat is completely in your frame. Good job, monkey. And we're gonna go ahead and install one of these rails. I've moved back to my full length rails because I'm actually putting my machine back together. All right, before you do this, you wanna go ahead and make sure this surface is nice and clean and flat, as is the back of this rail. I've left all these a little bit loose because you can see we still have some play. If you've done a nice job drilling these, there should be some movement in this rail. That's going to give us some fine tuning adjustment once we're done. Go ahead and leave them loose like this until we put in the other rail. Rinse and repeat. All right, now we're going to put back on our linear rails. Uh, just be Real gentle and line it up good and you shouldn't lose any ball bearings. Should slide up just fine. Now you can finally open the Physics Anonymous adapter. Ooh, shiny. If you want to know how we anodize these, check out our next episode. All right, if all has gone well, this should slip over with a fairly tight fit exactly what we want. Right, now we can go and put in our four M3 screws. I'm just barely tightening these. All right. Now the reason we left all these loose is this will be kind of self-aligning. What I usually do is I'll just tighten up the end ones. Again, just, just kind of finger tight. We want to still have this be able to move, but once it does move, it kind of locks into position. Same thing on this side. Now you want to run this back and forth a few times. That should go ahead and align these rails nicely, and it should move fairly smoothly. Once you're done, you just tighten up all these screws. You don't have to gronk on these, just German standard's going to be fine. Good and tight. And don't forget to tighten these up as well. The ball's gone well. This should still move nice and smooth. And we can put it back in the machine. All right, putting this thing back together is the same as it was taken apart, but in reverse. Don't forget to put this cover back on. This thing doesn't really actually do anything, best I can tell, but I put it back on anyway. Let's see, we put a little spot for a bearing in here. Not necessary at all, uh, as just the first modification I made to it to try and solve this problem. I'm not sure it actually helped. These you probably do want fairly tight. And yes, I am aware that this totally covers up the logo. I did that intentionally. For anybody who doesn't feel like advertising for us. That's it, you're done. This should be very, very rigid. You'll still have a little bit of uh, backlash on the ball screw, but that's not gonna be important when you're printing at all, so there you go. Actually, as I say that, there is one situation where that backlash would become a problem. 
If this isn't free to move, i.e. it doesn't fall back down under its own weight, you're going to end up on the wrong side of that backlash, and it's going to cause you some problems with your print. So basically you want to just make sure that this is loose enough that it always falls down. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoy the process and you end up with a much better printer. Uh, if you haven't ordered one of these already, they're up on the store. If you've gotten any Cubic Photon, go ahead and grab one. Uh, but that is going to do it for this episode. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Actually, there is one more thing. Uh, if you want to see a sneak peek of our next product, uh, you may recognize this is the AnyCubic bath that your resin goes in. They don't include any way to store this with resin in it and uh, protect this, so we have a solution. All right, here's what we've come up with. Uh, it's just two simple aluminum plates that go on both sides. There is a nice gasket that goes all the way around here to seal it up from the air and uh, any, any light leak, it's all sealed up. Now, this is still a prototype. The final version will actually have another set of O-rings on both sides. Um, but yeah, if you're interested, throw a comment down below.